So we're going to talk about the S-shaped model of growth or development from um, Banerjee and Duflo, and we also have in our course. And so what I want to think about is we've got two axes. We've got income today, so income today, and we've got income tomorrow or in the future. So the first thing that we want to think about is that we're going to have a line which is a line where income today equals income in the future. That's a 45 degree line. Okay, so that's telling us that along that 45 degree line, we've got income today equal to income tomorrow or income in the future. Now, what we want to think about with um, an S-shaped model is that we have the following. We have a curve that does that. Okay. We want to think about um, a couple of important points here. There's point N, point A, B. Now, here's the thing. Imagine if we're thinking about something like um, some kind of resource that we have or some kind of income that we have access to ourselves. Um, now, this income can be something like um, maybe I make some money off of owning some chickens. So the chickens are an asset to me and then I can um, uh, get eggs from the chickens and sell those eggs in order to um, make enough money to um, sustain myself. Or maybe I have some books, some cattle, and those cattle um, provide me, maybe um, I've got some cows and they give me milk, or maybe I have enough cattle that I can sustain them and um, basically slaughter some of them in order to eat some meat. Now, um, or I'm using them in other forms of agriculture. Now, um, if we end up in a situation, for example, with those chickens, or maybe I've got goats, and <clears throat> we're in a um, a part of the curve where, for, for whatever reason, I've got a few chickens, but I have to eat one of my chickens. Um, now, what that would suggest is that my income today, I might have a few chickens today, but now I've had to eat one of my chickens. Okay? And so what would then happen is that I have, say, started over here, and then I have... Sorry, started over here. Okay? And then I... Um, I initially thought that my income today was going to be equal to my income tomorrow. But then what happens is um, I see here that, you know, what's going to happen is with this model of um, the S shape, um, because I've eaten one of my chickens, I end up decreasing how many chickens I have. I then end up with less income tomorrow. I then um, have uh, less income today once more. I then have less income tomorrow and so on until I end up at point N. I trace a path from where I originally had some um, resource and some income down to having to continue to consume my chickens, eat the eggs until I am um, in a situation where I am stuck in poverty. I can't get out. Um, I no longer have the assets of my chickens or my cattle or my goats. Now, um, on the other hand, imagine that I had um, enough chickens or enough cattle to be beyond point A. In that situation, what would happen is the opposite. Imagine that I had enough chickens that the chickens that I had were enough to um, breed some more chickens so I could occasionally eat one or two of them. I could have enough eggs and I could sell more of them. In which case, my income would, um, say, start over here. And then I get more chickens, I breed more of them, I sell more of my eggs, I breed more chickens, I sell more, and I eventually end up at point B. Because I'm able to survive and breed more and, and basically flourish. Now the point here is that, what we want to think of is that depending on the income that you start off with, if you're in, I'm just going to separate the different parts of the figure, right, um, or on, on either side of point A. Okay, so on this side of the figure, we're in a poverty trap. That's the poverty trap part of the figure. 
Um, as I'm consuming more, as I'm using up my income, I end up at a lower point. It's really hard for me to get out of the poverty trap. On the other hand, um, if I'm starting off on the other side of point A, um, I can say this is kind of sustainable growth. Um, and for thinking about that, it's also a kind of virtuous cycle. So over here, we have a virtuous cycle where I'm moving from point A to point B. Down here, on the other hand, it's a vicious cycle where I'm moving from point A to point N. A virtuous cycle, virtuous circle. I'm um, over here keeping me in the poverty trap. Over here on this side, um, uh, sorry, vicious circle, vicious cycle over here with a poverty trap. Over here, virtuous cycle, virtuous circle, keeping me on the side of sustainable growth, getting me up to point B with high income today and high income tomorrow. Whereas down here, low income today, low income tomorrow. I've used up my resources, I can't make any more. Now, um, depending on what we think about this model and what would be going on, it could also be the case that in certain contexts, we might have a poverty trap model, and in others, we don't. So, it could be that there are certain constraints that are limiting people to be in this poverty trap model. So, for example, I spoke of a situation in which someone um, had some chickens and they were basically consuming up those assets um, and therefore decreasing their income. Now what was happening there is that they basically had no other resource. They didn't have government support, they didn't have access to loans, they didn't have the ability to um, consume other goods that would have kept them afloat. And so these are kinds of market failures which are big problems for development. Another thing that we can think about is that um, sometimes if someone is in point and it's suggesting that we need to give them a number of assets to move them beyond point A. But the other thing that we could think about is that if we had basically stopped the path over here, where we'd started over here and they were going to go down, imagine we could find some way at that point to just give them a little nudge beyond point A, rather than having to give them a big nudge once they'd gotten down to point N. Um, so we want to think about what that would look like. Imagine we could shift this S-shaped curve somehow, move it to, um, uh, to the left. And so thinking about how that would work, we want to think about how this S-shaped curve affects different people's choices. Some people end up stuck in the poverty trap. Some people, if they have enough income today, they manage to flourish, they do well in the sustainable growth or um, virtuous part of the figure.